And uh, we have another very special guest who just came into the studio. He is a Boston comic. A lot of comics out there are considered um, inspirational. And uh, I would say Captain Mustache is sort of the velvet underground of comedians where he made people want to become comedians. And uh, he's here today. He's back on the scene. I want to welcome Captain Mustache from Boston. How are you? Hi. <coughs> hey, it's good to be here on your radio program. Thanks for having me. And I also want to say the reason I'm out of breath is because I, I couldn't find which door was the right one. And I kept on opening them up. And I kept on t- went walking into the wrong room and interrupting the radio show that was there. What, what radio shows did you interrupt? Well, there was, there was uh, a guy talking to a lady, and they were talking about birthdays. <laughs> that sounds amazing. So I, I, sat and, I sat down and talked to him about birthdays. <laughs> For a long time, yeah. Well, 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 you I mean, quite late. I mean, I'm the show's about, almost over. Yeah, right. But I talked to him about, you know... Birthday cake, having some birthday cake, drinking some milk with it, singing happy birthday, cleaning up the wrapping paper, and uh, having bir- having a birthday time for, for, for your friends and your family. This is a... Uh, this is dead air right here that we're uh, that we're experiencing right now. Do you, I mean, I came all this way. Have you got any questions for me, sir? Are you just gonna stare at me like a <laughs> your eyes bugging out of your head, just looking like like, like a fish, just looking at me like a a big sweaty fish with flopped sweat, being embarrassed. <laughs> I see. I've I've completely silenced you. I just don't want to interrupt I, when you're on a roll. Um, now, uh, Captain Mustache. The question everybody has is, what happened? <laughs> yes. At the Gibson Amphitheater. Yes. Yeah. It was about this time. Uh, it's a f- very famous last, show. Yeah, about this time last year, a Christmas show was supposed to happen, where uh, I was. I had. I, it was a big comeback show. It was sponsored by uh, Guitar Hero and uh, a video game, uh, Call of Duty 4. And uh, it, we sold out the Gibson Amphitheater for the Captain Mustache comeback special. It was such a great show. I was there. Well, I, I, well everyone's been asking the same question. What happened out there? What happened in there? Can I ask you a question? Sure. What, what happened out there? I couldn't make it to the stage. What happened out there? I sat, I sat backstage looking at myself in a mirror, tucking in my shirt, and I realized I just don't have the material. So I crawled out the window... There was a window I had you, to jimmy. You crawled out the window? I had to crawl. They wouldn't just let you out? You couldn't just there walk out? There were guards there. They, they, if I left, they would have found me. So there was a window that I jimmied open. What? Some of my... I had a deli tray that I wedged up there and and smashed the window, and I, and I escaped through Universal Studios, what? through the back lot. Did you go through the King Kong? I went through King Kong, and I went through Jaws, and I... I have to admit, I was very scared. His breath smells like bananas. <laughs> His breath does smell like bananas. So what so, I have been doing since that time, since that humiliating moment, is I have been working on material for my fans. For for who now? Fans. Who who's this? The fans. Oh the oh the. I thought you were saying the fans. <laughs> For Arthur Fonzarelli. <laughs> but you mean the fans. Uh, you're, you've been working on material for them? I have been working on top-notch material 
that I am ready to deliver. I would love to hear and it because I, I am such a fan that I would count myself among those fans that are, have been waiting, salivating. Of course, of course. So, I mean, I've got, I mean, if you, I mean, I'm here. I, 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 Can we hear some? Would you honor us with some of that? Sure. On our free little sure. radio program? Absolutely. I mean, I'll give you a, a small taste okay. of what, what. That's a lot like what drug dealers do. Exa- I'm going to get you hooked. And then you're going to come back for more. Here it goes. All right, so, let's hear it. so uh, something about shoes, like uh, you know, well, well, how long should you wait to get some new ones? I don't know. Just so. something, something some, in I mean, the shoe arena. I've been wearing Crocs for three years. I mean, some of these are just areas, yeah. not exact jokes, but okay. something about what? Where are I? Put my shoes, something like that. So now you're on to where you put them, not. It's, it's shoe related shoe. humor. So there's could, a shoe chunk, just where you find yeah. shoes. When do you need to get new ones? Forty-five minutes of shoes. Maybe, Forty-five minutes. Yeah. Wow. Maybe they could, you, you know, you do a chunk about the shoe shoelaces getting shoe untied. Shoelaces. Yeah, reaching down to sh- tie your shoes. That's right. that's a vulnerable position. Hey, that's you know, not something bad, along that. You bend you know? down time. Do you put your foot up on something? Yeah, do you... What do I got to be, a ballerina to tie my shoe? You know, something like that. Something in the... Okay. 45 minutes I'm planning on shows. That's a start. That's yeah. a start. What else do you got? Uh, holiday material. Holiday material. Great. That's seasonal. Appropriate for uh, right now, I would say. Yeah, holidays... Like something along the lines where I'd start out something along the lines of, Hey, the holidays are coming up. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, you know, then it Christmas takes care, takes care of itself after that. Holiday jokes. Like, any any kind of observations? But... Well, sure. Something along the, yeah, it's getting closer to the holidays. <laughs> so just commenting on the time frame. <laughs> oh, and, and then maybe something about, I keep getting some gifts you don't want very much. Hey, it looks like I got another one of those. That's good. I mean, a lot of people get gifts they don't yeah. like. And people can relate to that. Sure. But it, it seems like you would need a unique uh, kind I, of spin on it. I though. hope that you saved the, the receipt because I'm okay. going to take this back because I happen to have several of those already. Seems to me, though, that, that you're just saying what people actually... You know, can relate to without relatable really, humor, but without the humor part of it, it seems relatable like there's no humor. take on. Well, I mean, he, okay, the fear enough, you know. But, <laughs> Thank you. But Thank no, you for acquiescing no, to that. Normally, that'd be an audience just roaring with laughter after well, I say something along the lines of, "I'm gonna take this back to the store." <laughs> That would normally be true, but after your big flame out at the Universal Amphitheater, I don't know if an audience trusts you anymore. I, I, I may have lost that trust. I think you need to go to some of the classics, maybe. I start have. Off. I think you may be right about that. Okay. Well, I mean, I could go back to, uh, hey, I like French fries. <laughs> that is a great. Ch- that's one of the best comedian chunks of all time. But uh, oh, uh, it's a great way to get y- your starting comedian over here. Yeah, no, I know the French fries bit. I, uh, yeah, the, the but it's about... a great way to get the audience on your side. Is to go, we all like French fries, don't we? Yeah. And then people applaud. And then yeah. they go, I see where this guy's coming from. I was applauding when I was a young boy, and I heard that Absolutely. bit for the first time. French I fries. saw you open up for Richard Klein at Harris, and it blew me away. Yeah, right. well, plenty more to come. I guess that's what I'm here to say. Plenty more to come. Uh, so for comedy, coming up. <laughs> Don't. What if? What if? Uh, I remember you used to do impressions. A oh lot. sure. What if, what if you went into some of those? Maybe to loosen up the the oh, you know, yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of mental sure. block that you have with. No, I, I do impressions. I. Who do you do? Well, I could do. Uh, I could do. Uh, you know. Uh, the guy, Fat Albert. Oh, Fat Albert, yeah, the Bill Cosby character. Yeah, yeah. and I could okay. do Bill Cosby talking to Fat Albert uh, about, uh, I mean, just give me any subject. I'll go. Uh, I'll just start. All right, fried chicken. No, all that's right. a, no, okay. Well, that sorry. could, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Back all right, up, back so, up, back something up. else. Cameras, something cameras. Else. Cameras? Yeah, cameras. Okay. That's nice and non offensive. I actually am hungry right now. That's the only reason I said that. I've actually been thinking about fried chicken myself. Okay. Here goes. <laughs> 
Fat Albert talking to Bill Cosby about the innocence of cameras.